Okay, so just again, this is what we've been doing, this Boolean logic and these gates and stuff like that and truth tables and even some examples. And there are lots of ways with both doing it in words, doing it in algebraic, working it out with numbers and using the gates. All of that has been what we've been looking at. So if I put this, Okay, give me an example of what it would look like in algebra. Like that, right? Yeah? Okay, let's do this one. And we'll use X and Y. Tell me what to do. Right, yeah, or... that, right? Okay, now or. What do I do? Right. Okay, now tell me the gate symbols. What does the not gate look like? Yeah, or don't worry, what can you do on the IB exam? You can do this. Okay, now with or, it's going to have two inputs, right? Same with and, it's going to have two inputs and one output. The not is just one, right? Just like you see here, just one input, two inputs, two inputs. The proper gates, okay, is this is and, this is or, This is not, okay? Those are the proper gates. Those are the ones you really should learn. All right. And now comes something else. You saw a preview of it where you could take a regular gate like this one and just put this on the end, okay? Which, as you know, looks, that circle looks like the, the thing at the end of the not gate, okay? So that's basically saying, well, this is an and gate with a not at the end, okay? So think about it. If I put a one and a one into this, what should come out is a one, but if I not it, what comes out is a zero. Similarly, what would come out? All right. Let's set up a truth table for this thing, okay? So all the possible inputs. Okay, what would come out of this thing, which is the combination of and and not, and I'm going to write that as nand, not and, what would come out here? Here? One. What will come out here? What will come out here? Okay, let's compare that with a regular and gate. Okay, so forget the nand, what would come out here? The regular and. Okay, see the difference? It's just basically inverted. It's inverted the gate. Okay, so, yep. Let's put an OR gate right here. What comes out? No. Okay, so if we can also have an OR gate with that on the end. So it's an or with a not, or a nor gate. What's coming out here? Now, this is easy, right? If it's like the other one, all you do is invert it, right? Invert it, okay? So this idea that we can invert the things going out, we can also invert the things going in. So this is these things called NAND and NOR gates, okay? Believe it or not, these gates are actually electronically faster than the AND and OR gates. You can ask Mr. Libby why, but there's actually a physics reason why that negation actually speeds up the process. 
Um, so the NAND gate, as you can see here, inverts the output. The NOR gate uh, does the same thing. But you can also invert the inputs right here, believe it or not. And an inverted OR gate at the input level acts the same as an inverted AND gate at the output level. Don't overthink this. Just know that this kind of stuff can happen. You can do these little inverts to flip the, the switch, essentially, because it's just positives and negatives. Okay? So, and we just saw that, that you can create truth tables from this with the NAND gate and the NOR gate. Okay? And you can also invert the inputs to an AND gate, which operates the same as an inverted reverse NOR or gate. It's crazy, okay? But this is all just kind of a lead-in into where I'm going next. There is one more gate you guys need to learn, okay? So here's, here's the way you can think of it. With these little inverters, either going in or out of it, the NAND, the NOR, the AND, and the OR gives a 1 or a 0 when both or either inputs are either 1 or 0. Like, don't overthink it. It's all just ones and zeros flipping switches, okay? There are two ways you could draw any gate and it would still work because the, everything is the dual of one another. Okay. So there's all these alternative versions of these gates, okay? So if you go to an electrician, these are the standard AND and OR gates, but they might also know what these NAND and NOR gates are or this version of the NAND and NOR gate. And believe it or not, this gate exists. Isn't this? Look at this one. Think about what that one does. Or that one. What's it doing? It's flipping it when it goes in, doing something with it, and then flipping it when it goes out. <laughs> there is. Um, there is when you put it together into larger circuits. Okay, uh, That actually used to, be, used to be in the old curriculum, but I can't really go over that right now. That's extra. Maybe on one of our new extra days, I could go over some of that extra content with you. Okay. Okay, actually, I'm going to skip through this because this won't matter, okay? All right. This leads to the final gate that you guys need to know called the exclusive OR. Okay, so forget computer science. What does the word exclusive mean? Where, use it in an example. Where would exclusive be used? Uh, deals. Exclusive deals. Uh, yeah, sure. It's exclusive to females. It's exclusive to females. Um, country clubs could be an exclusive club for only certain people who pay their membership, right? It's sort of a, it's sort of a, you know, like exclusive means it's kind of uppity, right? It's kind of like you're only allowed in if you're part of this exclusive club. So with the OR gate, we're going to make the OR gate exclusive. And the way we're going to do that is it basically changes around that says that with, this will give a 1 if one of the inputs is a 1 or the other one is a 1, but not both. Now, here's what I mean by that. Hang on. Let me, let me jump over here. A regular OR gate, okay? So if I do this, X or Y, and let's think about possible inputs. So it could be 1 or 0. Uh, actually, sorry, there should be one before that. So there'd be 0 or 0, 0 or 1, and 1 or 1. Okay? What's going to be the outputs in a regular OR gate? 0, 1, 1, 1, right? With the exclusive OR, okay, It's the same idea, but the symbol puts a circle around this, okay? What this gate means is, so this is your regular OR gate. With the exclusive OR gate, it says it will generate a 1 if one of the inputs is a 1 or the other one is a 1, but not both. So what would be the sequence here? Right. So it's a slight variation on that gate, that it means only if one of the inputs is a 1 will it exclusively generate a 1, okay? It is a useful gate for building up logic as well. The symbol for this thing is the regular OR gate, but it adds just a little sort of space in it there. That's the symbol for exclusive OR. But you guys don't need to know that, because in your IB exam, you can just draw a circle, and you could either put that symbol in there, 
Or you could put the word exclusive or, which is too hard to write, so they shortened it to this. X for exclusive, okay? Cool kids call it the Zor gate, okay? All right, so this gives a 1 if A is a 1 or B is a 1 but not both. This gives a 0 if A is a 0 and B is a 0 but not both. This gives a 1 if an odd number of inputs are 1. There's lots of different ways you can think of it, okay? Okay, so that's that exclusive OR. There's actually also an exclusive NOR, okay? <laughs> But again, that's just again, they got all these different versions of these gates where they negate or flip the inputs and the outputs, okay? So you can see that this can be pieced together into Boolean algebra and into logical gates and things like that to create all kinds of different things. If I had more time with you, I would explain why they've built these types of gates. The whole purpose of these logic gates is to eventually build an adding machine. That's all they really need to do, is they build all this logic to generate an adding machine, okay? So let me just skip through a lot of this, okay? You can see here in the notes it explains all that um, and how that can all piece together. But let me tell you kind of why this is important, okay? So again, a couple examples in the notes, but here's why, okay? If we think about an adding machine, it's going to need to add two numbers. And really, if we can make a machine add two numbers, we can build an entire math system from that, like I told you guys before, right? Because if we can add, woo, if we can add 5 plus 4, we can get an answer. If we can want to do 5 times 2, we would just go 5, right, plus 5. Or 5 times 3, 5 plus less than 5. If we want to do 5 minus 4, we could just do 5 plus negative 4 right? And division, everything would be built up from adding, okay? So, with binary numbers, if everything's adding, what are the possible things we'd need to add? Well, 0 plus 0, 0 plus 1, 1 plus 0, and 1 plus 1, right? And we generate results. 0, 1, 1, and 2, which caused a carryover, okay? So the way it works is, what would be the logic of this? When, at, when would I generate a zero, a one, like, what does this look like? Which, other than the last one, and with the last one, let's just sort of separate it into two digits. So there was a zero, and then a one was carried over, okay? Does this look, sequence, look similar to you? Like if I was to put this into a truth table, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and 0, 1, 1, 0. Have you seen that before? What is this right here? Which gate is doing that? Exclusive or, right. The exclusive or is what's doing that. So the exclusive or generates the answer to an adding question, except for that, the carryover bit. When would the carryover bit be generated? What gate would generate when two ones we get a one? And, right. The AND gate would generate that. Okay? So the AND gate would say if the two inputs are a one, I'm going to generate a carryover bit there. But then obviously adding machines might have to go with the carryover bit to then, well, really we're kind of dealing with, but you get the idea. So these gates, can be used to generate a machine to do adding. And uh, 